Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The GSLV Mark III is the most powerful rocket ever created by ISRO. This rocket was capable of carrying 10 tons of payload to low Earth orbit. This was made possible because the rocket is much more powerful than its previous variant. Mark III used two Vikas liquid fuel engines instead of the conventional one. But the most noticeable difference here is these two huge cylinders strapped to the side of the main body. This huge cylinder is called solid rocket booster and the GSLV uses two of them. Each of these boosters is capable of producing a maximum of 5150 kilonewtons of thrust. The boosters are 3.2 meters wide and 25 meters long and carried 207 tons of fuel and was able to burn for 130 seconds. The working of the solid rocket booster is very similar to the Diwali rockets that we burst, except that the rockets that are used to go to space are exponentially larger. In solid boosters, the fuel and the oxidizer are combined together and stored in a solid state inside a metal case. Just like how we ignite Diwali rockets, solid boosters also have an igniter. When the boosters are ignited, the fuel in the boosters burn in a concentric manner and generate exhaust gases which are used to generate thrust. The solid fuel and the metal casing of the rocket are separated by an insulator. The shape of the core also plays a very vital role in the burning characteristic of the solid booster. The most simple core cross section is the circular core. The hole in the middle is called a perforation and the different core designs are called. The shape of the core plays a vital role in deciding the thrust that a rocket generates over a period of time. This is because the thrust of the rocket is directly proportional to the burning area of the rocket fuel. As the burning area reduces, the amount of thrust that is generated is also reduced. We can prove this by comparing two different grains of fuel. In a circular grain, the amount of thrust in the rocket increases with time. This is because as more fuel is used, the burning area of the fuel increases. This increases the thrust of the rocket over time. Another commonly used grain structure is the star. In a star shaped perforation, the rocket booster has a very high thrust value initially and it decreases as time progresses. This is because of the reduction in the burning area. Initially, the burning area of the fuel is much higher but decreases with time. These rockets are also very easy to build in comparison to the liquid engines. Solid rockets also tend to have a much higher thrust ratio than liquid propelled engines of similar dimensions. But this is at the expense of very small burn time of these engines. Another disadvantage of solid rockets is that once ignited, it is not possible to stop the combustion nor reignite the boosters. To overcome this, pulsed rockets are used. In these rockets, more than one combustion chamber is used in the same booster casing. When the fuel in the first chamber is expended, the second one is used on demand. Because of the high thrust value, these rockets are used in the first and second stages. The solid rockets are used in ordinary missiles and intercontinental ballistic missiles due to their reliability, ease of storage and handling. The Agni-5 ICBM developed by the DRDO uses a solid rocket motor. The rocket boosters of ISRO GSLV Mark III are the third largest just after the boosters of the Space Shuttle and Ariane 5 rocket. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. We'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.